Welcome to our 800 square foot apartment in Park Slope, Brooklyn. Hi, Apartment Therapy. I'm Anna. And I'm Garrett. Is there any color you don't like? I don't know. That could be even an answer, yeah, too. Yeah, I don't think there is. <laughs> <laughs> I love color and I love finding it in unusual places like walking down the street in the city during my lunch break or like flipping through a magazine and maybe finding a color palette for interiors based on a runway show. Yeah, I just love surrounding myself with color and I think it makes me and other people happy. So this is our bedroom. The palette really stemmed from this vintage Moroccan rug. So you can see the mauve in the bedding, adding in that cobalt blue again from the door. Lots of little pops of the hot pink, some green colors in the artwork on the wall. One of the ways that we find designers that we like to bring into our space is actually through a newsletter that we run together um, called coolstuff.nyc. Um, we feature a lot of small makers and designers. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, I think every accent pillow in our bed uh, is by someone that we've featured mm -hmm. uh, in the newsletter. Yeah, We have these two really cool pretzel looking pillows on the bed by an artist called Juji that's based in New York. I think it's really satisfying to look at like a matte cobalt blue object. Yeah, it draws you in for sure. Mm -hmm. Captivating. The side tables are actually ones that uh, we had custom made for this space by this artist called Sophie Collet, uh, who works out of her apartment actually in Bushwick. We have this really awesome marble mantle that we love creating different arrangements on and like curating different moments with new and old pieces that we collect. Yeah, even though the, uh, the fireplace doesn't work, it's great to have such an original element uh, of the space. Our favorite part about the room though is how much light we get. Right in the morning, the sun shines through. We even were really minimal on, on the window treatment. It's uh, just like a soft white curtain with like a really tactile pattern on there. And that's another thing that's a cohesive element within the bedroom is that checkerboard pattern. It's in maybe the detail of a binding of a book. Vases have this checkerboard pattern and of course the rug. So it's another thing besides color that sort of brings it all together. So this is our living room. Uh, it's where we spend a lot of time relaxing in the space. Either watching TV, listening to records, having coffee in the morning. Um, it's a place where we both unwind at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. One of the big moments in this room is the giant bookshelf that has uh, all sorts of books, from art books to poetry, memoirs. Mm -hmm. We try to create little different scenarios within the entire bookshelf. So one section is all short stories. One is all zines that we've collected. Lots of artwork too. I think bookshelves can be used for so many different things and we actually have some pieces framed hung on the wall mm -hmm. uh, behind books we have things balanced all over the place you can tell that we use all of our radiators as tables <laughs> so we had this travertine cheese board and it fit the top of the radiator exactly so we place it on top and then that was a way to put that really large-scale plant there Behind the couch, there's these sliding closets where we keep winter clothes and things that we may not get to all the time. So we place these velvet curtains as a way to add color, texture, and height to the room while also concealing these closets. So we have this really great record table that is sort of the centerpiece of this wall and it sort of grounds the space as a large piece. It's actually uh, meticulously organized as well, alphabetical by artist and date. Uh, it's the best way to make sure that you can actually listen to the records is find, be able to find the ones you're looking for rather easily. Our proudest DIY in the whole space um, was really changing all of the lighting. Uh, and then we even added um, some molding around a lot of the lights to, you know, keep the balance between um, this this old pre-war building uh, and the modern fixtures that we were putting in. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our artwork is actually just posters from different museums that we've been to. Um, and I think it's a really great way to add artwork to your collection that won't break the bank and it adds a lot.
I think our biggest challenge was figuring out how to lay out the kitchen. We sort of made it a hybrid of a dining space where we're cooking, adding in a butcher block so that we have more counter space to prep and all of that. And then it's also a workspace for Garrett during the day. <laughs> yes, yeah, the, the dining table is also my desk uh, most yeah. of the time. So we were trying to figure out how to allow it to have all these different purposes. And we have these really cool Chinese lanterns that hang over the dining table. And it's sort of like a visual tool to separate the dining from the rest of the kitchen space. When we first moved in, every single element was mm -hmm. totally white. Yeah, the white tile, the white floor, the white cabinets. So we had to figure out how to add in color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the biggest way we did that is uh, we painted the whole kitchen um, lilac. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no regrets. <laughs> <laughs> and so I wanted to go kind of neutral on the floor. So the rug has more brown tones in it and then that allowed for more pops of color, like the cobalt blue in the butcher block. And then the color sort of spread around the space with a lot of the artwork that we chose to hang on the wall as well. Yeah, all the artwork in the kitchen is actually food themed as well. So whether it's photos from dinners with friends or illustrations of oranges or olives, uh, we've really tried to kind of um, keep to a theme a little bit in a fun way. And especially being in a rental um, with a kitchen, there's a lot of things you can't change. But we realized there was a couple of really easy to do DIYs that could make the space feel more like us. One of the biggest ones of those was actually just changing the faucet uh, in the kitchen sink, which, you know, we, we found a, a really affordable, just matte black uh, faucet online and then changing the, the cabinet knobs to match. Uh, really brought it out of the 90s and more into something that made it feel more like home for us. In the most literal sense, we really have a piano bar. We have our small home bar that sits on top of uh, this electric piano that most of the time just looks like a small console table. Uh, but if we have friends over and want to play music together, uh, we can just open the keyboard and we have cocktails and music all together. Mm -hmm. We also have this fun little built-in nook above the piano. And that was a fun way to add in our colorful glassware that's at the ready for a drink or a glass of wine. And we also installed these really simple floating shelves. So definitely don't be afraid of color. Gather around maybe artwork that you have or a really cool bedspread and try and see if there's already a palette in something that you have and you didn't even realize that it was there and maybe it's the beginning of a palette. So you can start adding in accents based on this one item or group of items that already work together. And then that way, when you add in more stuff, you're following this guideline color palette and then everything will eventually flow and work together. Cobalt blue forever. <laughs> <laughs>